What's up, good people, and welcome or welcome back to my channel where we bond over our favorite TV shows, trending topics, and everything in between that we care about. So today, what I've decided to do with all that's going on with the James Timothy Norman versus the United States of America case with the murder for hire plot against his very own nephew, Andre Montgomery, uh, back in 2016. And I was thinking after my last video, after I read Travel Hill's plea agreement, I was revisiting the story with you guys and basically how we got to where we are today. And so actually the first video that I did on the Sweetie Pie's family was in regards to some social media drama between Miss Robbie, Janae, and Tim. And back then, the context that we had was that Janae had went on her uh, Instagram Live, I think it was, and she was blasting Tim and talking about him being an absentee father and basically what he didn't do and, and uh, he was abusive and things of that nature. And so in return, Miss Robbie then went on her Instagram Live in response to Janae's accusations. In addition, Miss Robbie was starting to have issues with Janae because to them, Janae was acting funny and pulling back with them having access to little Tim, no longer allowing him to come to Miss Robbie's house. And she was insisting that they came to her house. And, and then Tim, in rebuttal, did his whole rant. And so we're going to, I don't have Janae's Instagram live. I think, you know, when that happened, it caught everyone off guard. Nobody was really screen recording that. So I've actually never seen that footage. It's just been things I've heard about that. But we do have Miss Robbie and Tim's reaction to all of that. And now where we are today in the future, we can now see that this was way bigger than what we thought. This was bigger than the drama between Tim and Janae and custody issues. This literally, in my opinion, I think this was related to Janae actually knowing what was happening with the federal investigation with Tim. And I don't know if they tipped her off or if there was just word on the street and at that point, because this is literally this situation here that we're about to react to and watch was less than a month before Tim actually got arrested. And we found out all of this that we're dealing with today. So I believe that Janae had a heads up on that. So in return, she didn't want little Tim to be with James Timothy Norman around that time, because I guess in her mind, maybe it's like, I don't know if he'll, you know, kidnap our child to, you know, run from the police. Uh, will he, you know, use our child as a shield when they finally do crack down on him? And it made me realize that I've actually been covering this case for over two years, even prior to us actually knowing that it was a case, that anything was happening behind the scenes. And I am truly a diehard Welcome to Sweetie Pie's fan. And that's very evident on this channel because even prior to the murder for hire plot coming out and Tim being uh, arrested and charged for the conspiracy. I had already done a video on the Sweetie Pie's family. And so what I want to do is just take a retrospective look and go back in time and kind of work our way back to where we are today with the new knowledge and fresh insight that we have on what was occurring back then, almost like the Welcome to Sweetie Pie's investigative series that I have, and check it out in the card above if you have not already, where we don't just look at the episodes, but we kind of dissect the episodes and see how it pieces together with where we are in the case and see how really much of it was captured on camera where we can see it leading down this road. Now that we know the inner workings of the sick mind of James Timothy Norman. And so long story short, what I want to do in this video is take a look back and do a reaction video to me reacting to the incident that occurred between Janae, Miss Robbie and Tim Norman, literally like 30 days or so prior to Tim being arrested. And I think this now makes sense. And so just a disclaimer to those who may be new to this channel and don't know how things really roll around here. The video that we are reacting to is literally a month away from being two years old. This channel was very new around that time. Therefore, the way that I did my commentary back then 
is drastically different from the way that I do my commentary today. And so please don't waste your time commenting with critiques about what I did two years ago because it's improved. <laughs> this is the way I'm going to do it, but just be mindful because it was two years ago and my commentary was different. I am talking at times throughout. And so bear with the talking over the clips from both Miss Robbie and Tim Norman. It was doing the best I could with old footage. I'll give a little bit more commentary once we actually watch this, but either way, we're going to get into this and we're going to watch Miss Robbie and Tim's response around this time where definitely Miss Robbie probably had no idea that this stuff was happening behind the scenes with the feds. And so let's keep in mind, this was literally less than a month before Tim was actually arrested. Still on social media running her mouth. My problem is with me and Janae. It has nothing to do with Tim. So why all of a sudden that you putting out there that Tim was have a good relationship. Now, Tim was in town to see his baby right. and you wouldn't let him. So it's all about the money because if you was with a dude that wasn't working, didn't have a job, you wouldn't be going through all this. She have a Gucci so either you're trying to get more Friday. media attention or Thank whatever. Yeah. I'm not in the fight. I've tried to stay out of you and Tim's life, but right is right. And I've tried to tell you what's right. And I've tried to tell Tim what's right. It's true, right but is right. Now that you wouldn't let me see my grandbaby and she will on a day check that I thought I was sure. going to do it, because I keep that baby all the time. So now it seems to me that it's when it's convenient for you, she love her you let him come over. So, so you knew too. I had waited all day to see that baby. If it wasn't but for 15 or 20 minutes, I had bought him a motorcycle. His dad had bought him a video chair that she told us to get. And I told and her from the beginning her that his dad said he was going to come to town. I'm trying to talk to my son as a mother, tell him the right thing to do. But as a baby mama, you ought to keep this stuff going. So it's got to be about the money. Uh, as a baby mama. Why would you let him give the <laughs> gift to the baby? You have never let me bring his toys to your house. But all of a sudden, you want to bring the gifts to his house. Tim doesn't Changing know the rules in the middle of the game. They've never talked, they've never met. And now, I'm protecting my son. I don't want him going into something that he don't know what it is. He never met the man. What man goes to another man's house, especially if That's he's been true. with his woman, That's without wisdom. him having an understanding? Girl, this is real right. life, so mm. get with it. Now, you keep trying to stay on this thing. I've stopped, but I'm not going to let you there. attack Tim. So why would you stay with him all these time? And here's nine years after TJ, and you bring it up that he's abusive. So what is the problem? Now you're trying nine to get at later. Tim. Tim has never said one word to you. I've kept him off of this social media. Tim just don't say nothing. But at one point, I was trying to mend the two of you so you could mm, be she kept off parents. <laughs> but it seemed like that's not working. Now this is going too far. And it, I don't want to get back on here. But if I have to respond, yeah, yes. I will. Because Having right is right and wrong is wrong. And the truth don't need no support. Receipts right and right all that wrong bullshit wrong. don't count. Now, Miss Robbie is 80, but Miss Robbie is still a fighter, and I will well, get I'll back out there and fight. So please stop going there. <laughs> please stop going there. <laughs> well, I guess Miss Robbie said what she said. Um, <laughs> I agree with. Uh, <laughs> that's right. As I said then, and I'll say it again, Miss Robbie said what she said. So. Now, looking back, because again, now we have context, we have full context, even though I'm still not exactly sure what prompted Janae to start blasting Tim, you know, on social media. I'm sure he was behind the scenes doing something crazy and probably just she got fed up or something. But Miss Robbie's response to it at the time, not having context that we have today that, you know, part of the reason why she was probably holding little Tim back from being able to visit her freely like he once did and all of that. Well, and, and on top of that, Ms. Robbie saying they bought him, because this was around his birthday, they had bought him birthday gifts. And whereas normally Little Tim would come to Ms. Robbie's house and that's where they would, you know, do those sort of things and exchange gifts, et cetera. All of a sudden, Janae was saying, uh, he can't come and if you guys want him to have it, you have to bring it to me. You have to bring the gifts to him at my house. And so that was Miss Robbie's part of Miss Robbie's issue, at least, was not only was Janae at that time 
on social media blasting Tim. But at that time, she was also making visitations with little Tim very difficult for them. And so I can see Miss Robbie's side back then, which is when I did this video, I was more in line with seeing Miss Robbie's side. But now, having full context, I'm, I'm down with Janae. I'm like, I get it now. Because maybe the reason she even allowed them to get the gifts and all of that, because maybe originally she was planning to keep things the way that they were and the way that they had been doing it routinely, which is her dropping little Tim off at Miss Robbie's house and he gets to hang out with his grandmother and all of that. But maybe she got win from, again, you know, the feds or whoever tipped her off. And she's like, oh no, my baby can't be around him right now. Not like that, not without me present. And so Miss Robbie's other piece was that she felt like it was about the money. And we we know those of us who have, you know, are really super fans and have, you know, have watched Sweetie Pies, you know, from the beginning. We know that part of the deal or the benefit of Janae being with Tim was the financial benefits of it all. We we know that. Like, yeah, let's keep it real, people. <laughs> we know that. And so that's what Miss Robbie was going for in that moment because they were having uh, child support custody, you know, battle issues and all of that. And Tim kind of gets into that in his piece. So without me going on too far and, and saying too much, that's going to be what Tim is going to say anyway. Let's get into Tim's response after all of this. Okay, so here's Tim. Let's get his version. Let's see what Tim is talking about. Um, Tim can be a little rough around the edges, so let's see how this goes. <laughs> we thought it was but just like rough Tim. around the edges. I, I like Tim, but he, Tim got issues too, because I've seen that on the show. But let's go, let's see. I was calling it way back you know, then. The same thing, <laughs> disrespectful by my son's mother. Uh, out of respect for my son, and I want so him to go up and, and see that. But now you put me in a position where I gotta defend myself because you got my 80 year old mother I heard on the internet going back and forth. And you keep on calling the house, screaming at her, uh, asking her she's why, screaming she's, at uh, uh, why she's speaking the truth. Well, well, I gotta speak the truth myself, you know. And you wanna put me, pay me out to be a, a deadbeat dad. Uh, why don't you tell people how the last time I picked my She didn't say you were deadbeat, she said you were absentee. And you started blowing me up to bring him back. Whose phone is that? Is this his phone? It's not my phone. I take him out of his car. I'm seat. watching this on He phone. run, he run to you. You stand in the garage. He runs into you. I bent over the car. I'm getting his happy meal and his toys. I bought him in his backpack. You Turn your garage down notifications off when you're doing lives. You, and the police come out of the backyard. You had the police waiting on me Tim. in the backyard when I was coming to drop my baby off. You set me up. You don't do that to no black man. You don't do that to no man, especially the man that spent half his life, spent ten and a half years in Why prison. Why she had the police waiting? There's nothing I will ever. There's nothing you can do to make me ever forgive you for that. There's nothing you can do to explain or justify that. You, you had the police anger. waiting for me in the backyard. You set me up when I was coming with my baby from the playground. Set you up I will never though. come to that house I mean, again, ever. So you're not going to handle me and tell me to bring my son's toys over there. And most of the time, all, all the stuff he got in the house, I got anyway. He don't even know I got him all that stuff. And as far as child support, as far as me being a deadbeat, why don't you give me my change? Talk about a court order. Change. Talk about a court order. Why don't you tell everybody how uh, uh, when we was going to court, you was threatening to to have tell all about our me and, all my me and my mama business about the different things we own and this bank account there here and this bank account there after the IRS and I already came and got us for half a million dollars Ooh, after the IRS yeah, already on me. Why don't you tell them how you threaten, threaten to tell the feds Ooh. this and that. I thought I had problems. <laughs> tell people that. And why don't you give me my change for as child support is concerned. Why don't you sell that five bedroom, five bath house with the waterfall in the back and the swimming pool change. and the big jacuzzi. Why don't you sell that give me my change. Why don't you sell that big boy Beamer, your BMW you got you know, that I put you in after you didn't want the Porsche no more. She's still driving his car too. BMW before that. <laughs> and, and, and go back and get that Chrysler Sebring you was driving when I, when I got you. Chrysler Sebring. Give me my change. <laughs> From all them, them ten thousand dollars. See, that's what people do to you when, Versace like, you dated and, and they like gifted you. That's why I don't let nobody take care of me. Times. Then when, when it's old, they want to point out everything they've done for you. Still sleeping on? Did you buy new shoes? And want it back? <laughs> huh? All the TVs and it. everything in the house. Why don't you give me my chances? Because I ain't I working no more. I'm not on TV. I don't have a. I don't have an image to protect. I'm not getting the well, TV check. I don't have to answer your, the own. Yeah, you own still can't call me don't no more. Like Tim, room? don't say this. Tim, be nice because uh, Tim, you know, uh, we got to protect the brand. It's good for the show. I ain't got to right. protect brand. the check no more. I ain't got that you no more. You still got so, brand though. 
I ain't yeah, got it. The show. people probably gonna say I owe you about 400, 400 or so. I ain't got it. Why don't you sell some of this stuff and get change? Why don't you do that? And as far as me being abusive, yeah, why don't you tell the people how you used to come up? Why don't you tell the people to call down to the marquee and ask uh, Andre and Melanie how they used to put you out of the club and you come in there and, and try to start fights with me? How they have to call the police on you and you outside on the parking lot kicking my car? And they do seem like huh? you got a little ratchet. Why don't you, have to, why don't you tell them how I used to call people over to the really house, call nice my security over, you're taking like, helmets to my car. Very you know, I can't kill, leave. You coming to the restaurant messing with me. Why don't you tell them how we was in Beverly Hills with the whole family out here with all these white folks and you drunk in the lobby. They got to pull you up off of me. You you taking my money out of my bags and throwing my money all over the lobby. They got to go to your mother's room yeah. and get your mother to come stop you. And I'm abusive. Why don't you tell that? She had to have money. And why don't you tell them how the and reason I left you in the first place was because you decided to sleep with the help. You slept with the cameraman. Why don't you tell them <gasps> that? On and Pierce she slept with the cameraman. Around season three because you slept with the cameraman. Shout out to Jose. I ain't got no ill ill feelings towards you, bro. She needed some attention. You gave her that. But you 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 was with the boss when you slept with the help. So that's why I left in the first place. Damn. And I didn't turn back. And every time we didn't want to film with you, you threatened to take my son. You would let my son film. That's the only reason you was still on the show. And my mama forgave you. My mama forgave you because she loved that baby. Damn, Tim, you was so I stayed quiet. Hard. And they let you. And they let you film because I was being a, trying to be a good dude. You know, I, my mama forgave you. Monique and everybody else forgave you. I ain't never forgive you. Why don't you tell them how you were never? My son was never even on the last episode, last season of the show at all. Money could have went towards his college fund. They want to bring him to L.A. He can't come unless you come. He can't come to Houston unless you come. We got a family trip down to Orlando. You come on down to Orlando. You want to let my son film with me. Why don't you tell them that? Monique can't bring him to see me. My mama can't bring him to see me. Charles can't bring him to see me. I begged you for years to see my son. I begged you. I've been patient all this time, hoping you get over it. I was happy you had a new guy. I, I pray you stop thinking about my ass. Damn. But you got a new guy and you still calling me, crying, snotty nose. The night before your wedding, you called me crying, snotty nose. I told you about that and Mary that could do, he's a good guy. I ain't never heard nothing bad about that man, so I ain't said a word. Damn, the night before son. the wedding, she called him crying. Not one person told me nothing bad about that dude. He's supposed to be a good dude. So I've been quiet, trying to give you your time. But now you want to take him for my, my mama and my family can't see him either? You want to put me out to the world to be a, to a bad, be a bad guy? And people ask why Monique ain't dealing with, where's Monique? How can Monique don't stop them? Monique don't fuck with you no more. You want to run around town act like you a business that, person? That they showed Monique about, and I her falling out on I the show, money, so I know that's true. Done. That business is for Monique. And you took half the money. You took half the money for Monique and you had Monique doing all the work. And then you took the money and went and opened the gym for your guy. But this is cool. Uh, no problem with that. You know what I'm saying? Monique just separated herself. You know what I'm saying? We separated and got Monique a whole new business. She good. Why don't you tell the people how every time Monique was had a new guy, somebody she was talking to, you creep behind her back and deal with the new guy she talking to. That's why Monique don't deal with you. Why don't you run tell all that? Huh? You don't want to tell all that, do you? You want to do the first thing a lot of women do nowadays when they, they upset. They want to say a guy's abusive. Man, you, you, man. Damn, Tim. Damn. <laughs> Woo. That just almost took me out. <laughs> I'm not laughing at like laughing at that because that's a real life situation. Woo. Y'all gotta give me a moment. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I still feel the same way. Like, y'all got to give me a moment. <laughs> that was a lot. Revisiting that. So, clearly, we can see here in that video, Tim's anger. And he's so riled up about Janae potentially making him look like a bad guy to the world Meanwhile, even when that happened, <laughs> when that happened, well, by the time that had happened, he had already taken the life or had the life of Andre taken. 
And then his moral compass is like, how dare you make me look like a bad guy to the world? Like, dude, what is wrong with you? What is wrong with you? <laughs> oh my God, what is wrong with you? So, <laughs> so you have that and he aired out everything between him and, J well, I'm not going to say everything. He aired out what he felt was Janae's part in, you know, all the stuff she's done to him, etc. What I found was interesting, though, in his recounting of the last time he had dropped Little Tim off. And I guess that now is the last time he will have ever dropped Little Tim off and maybe maybe even seen him in person. Who knows? Depending on how Janae takes all of this. So what he said that was key. I mean, this is, these are the things that's making me say, oh, wow. I think Janae knew about the investigation and she knew that it was coming down to the, the, you know, final hours because he said when he dropped little Tim off, gave him to his mom and he's pulling things out of the car. He said, Janae hurry up and shut the garage door on him. And then the police came from the backyard. And I, when, when I heard that literally almost to date, close to two years ago, I was like, what was happening that would make her do that? That's a lot. Like, and was she afraid of him and all of these other things? But it has me once again thinking Maybe she knew because for me hearing that it was to me very odd that the police would be there and like waiting in the backyard on him to drop off his son. My initial thought back then was maybe she just, it was a safety concern or she didn't know if he was going to act up on her, et cetera. But now it has me thinking that possibly she knew they were at the final hours of this situation and he was about to go down and she just wanted to make sure that the transition of having little Tim come home went as smooth as possible. And if something did go down that the police were there right there at her beck and call it seems somewhat unique to have the police, you know, be waiting. And so now it's making me think that like maybe they reached out to her saying, Hey, you know, Things are going to be going down. We want to make sure your son is safe. I don't know how that works because that this is a very unique situation in the sense of they were investigating Tim for, uh, was it four years? Yeah, four years before everything, you know, before we got to the point of him actually getting arrested. And so very interesting. So now it gives more perspective on possibly why Janae's behavior was what it was during that time. All of the other stuff that Tim talked about, the dysfunctional stuff, the cheating, the, you know, being money hungry and all of that, you know, that is what it is. That's that's not important at all to what, what we're dealing with right now. The, the subject at hand, which is this fool being responsible for taking the life or masterminding the taking of the life of Andre Montgomery, who was his very own nephew of his only sibling, his, his brother. That's like, whew. so with that, I just wanted to, um, revisit this because for me, this is the beginning of the journey of where we are now, like in my life as a social media influencer or this channel, but also this story as a whole, like, yes, many of us follow the series uh, for seven years, we didn't know what we were watching unfold. And for me, this particular video is the beginning of my journey of my eyes being opened and seeing this family in not so much of the rose colored glasses of a reality TV family that I admired and started to see the realness of it. And in addition, seeing the morbid, the greed, the tragedy of this family, like it stripped down the veil of this family, um, you know, seemingly being somewhat perfect in the sense of TV perfect. So now after two years, we finally have a trial date of September the 6th of 2022 for James Timothy Norman, Terika Ellis and Yael Yagnam. So of course I'm going to be following that trial up close and personal to bring you guys the play by play and the details of that case. Because again, I've been invested in this for going on two years now. And so I want to see personally justice for Andre 
and closure uh, to some degree, closure for the family, for all of those involved. And, and even those of us who are fans, there's there's some emotional tie there, not, you know, as deep, of course, but we, some of us are emotionally invested in this story. And because many of us as fans have followed this family for well over a decade, we have some emotional attachment and have been affected by this to some degree as well. And so I want to do my part in um, helping us all get a level of closure on whatever level I can personally. And so with that, I will have some other videos coming that will give us a bit of a retrospective and a refresher so that we're kind of current with all that has occurred in these two years so that when the trial starts, you know, we're all on the same page. So with that, I just wanted to bring this video to you guys to share a moment for me that was impactful and began this journey. And so with that, please hit that like button below to help us grow. And if you're new to this channel or returning and have not subscribed as of yet, this will be a great time to hit that subscribe button below to join one of the most evolved subscriber families in these YouTube streets and to stay in touch with not only this story, but the many other <laughs> series that we have on this channel that I'm trying to keep up with. <laughs> they coming though, they coming. So with that, until next time, until I upload the next video, make sure to take care and be blessed. Peace. Hey, popping like I'm post to. Watch out for the people that ain't close to. Speak a little something you could toast to. I ain't tryna hear about what you won't do. Moving like I mean to. Hit the ground running like the rent do. Speak a little something that you into. I ain't tryna hear about what you been through. Like hold up, hold up, say what's the hold up? I got the pack, who got the roll up? I'm tryna pull up. It seems like every time I show up, it gotta go up. See the drip, they see the glow up. Oh now they know us. It's funny how my pockets out of shape, but I'm fit for the flex. Clear the phone call, hit my chick with a text. Parlay through the bird with my drip from the checks. Save a couple hundred by your with the rest. I